well as America moves further and further away from slavery and enforced segregation. The problems of slavery and enforced segregation continue to grow, and nowhere is institutionalized racism and white supremacy more obvious than in that bastion of white privilege known as outdoors. Several months ago, ABC News addressed this latest national nightmare in a segment they called America's Great White Outdoors. Pay special attention to the terribly pained expression on the face of the deeply, deeply morally outraged news person. America's national parks and public lands have long been places of refuge in times of turmoil. But new government data first shared with ABC News shows people of color are less likely to take advantage of the great outdoors. Our Devin Dwyer takes a look at why that is and why it's so important for our collective health and the future of the parks themselves. Now, before we go any further, let's just address that term people of color. People of color, you see refers to the entire length and breadth of humanity, a term that unites us, one that removes mental barricades of religion or national origin. Africans, Asians, Latinos, Maoris, Aborigines, Pacific Islanders, Arabs, Mongols, people of the Indian subcontinent, people of Southeast Asia, China. The entire human family is people of color, except white people. E pluribus unum, on the other hand, is about people from all over the globe coming together in America to begin new lives that are free of old hatreds and prejudices. That's why the term people of color is actually about dividing the nation into tribes and Marxist critical race theory is very clear about why this has to be done. All of the outrage generated by segments like this one from ABC News must be focused towards the middle, towards the entire idea of e pluribus unum. Any suggestion that these tribal differences are artificially imposed must be ruthlessly attacked and silenced. And if there's no genuine injustice to fuel the perpetual rage furnace, well then, synthetic injustice must be manufactured in significant enough quantities to keep the boilers of hatred at full pressure, because without that pressure, there would not be enough steam power to move the people who are out of power and money into positions of power and money. Anyway, back to ABC News's Outrage Du Jour. The sweeping vistas stir the soul. Wildlife and waterfalls awaken a sense of wonder. The American wilderness, a playground for old and for young, and overwhelmingly white. Overwhelmingly white? My God, how overwhelmingly white? How many people of color managed to sneak into these last bastions of white supremacy? Is it 2%? 3 maybe? In a report first shared with ABC News, the Park Service finds 77% of its visitors are white. Just 23% are people of color. The minorities make up 42% of the U.S. population. So, according to the statistics just supplied by ABC News, here's the chart of people of color versus non-people of color in the national parks versus here in the general population. The injustice here, presumably, is that one-third of the U.S. population makes up only one-quarter of the park population, therefore racism. It has to be racism. This is America, is it not? What other explanation could there be other than racism? Well, I decided to use my white privilege to unlock what the left claims is a race-coded tool of systematic white supremacy called logic, and with this weapon of oppression securely in hand, I did a quick search to see if, well, I don't know, location might have anything to do with this. And according to 2018 figures from the United States Department of Agriculture, people of color make up 43% of the urban population and 22% of the rural population. Now, here are images from the Wikipedia page that lists 63 national parks in the United States. I know these images are coming fast, but that's kind of the point. While there is, in fact, incredible geological diversity here, those of you with keen powers of observation may be able to detect a trend here. Of the 63 national parks in the United States, 62 of them are, surprisingly enough, in rural areas. The sole exception being Gateway Arch National Park in St. Louis, and the only reason that that is listed as a national park is because of the man-made construction that was placed there. When it comes to natural beauty, you will be shocked, shocked to learn that 100% of the nation's national parks are in rural areas. So here's the people of color, non-people of color racial makeup of rural America, you know, where the parks are, it's 22%. 
And here is the statistic from the ABC News story regarding people of color, non-people of color, in terms of visitors to the national park system. People of color are 23%. Now, as you can see, when it comes to the people who live in relative proximity to the national parks, people of color are not only not excluded, they are actually just slightly overrepresented. In other words, there are slightly more people of color inside a national park than there are in the neighborhoods surrounding the national parks. So what exactly is the claim here? When you look around, you don't see people that you identify with. You don't feel welcome. You feel out of place. You feel literally like you are an outsider. I just want to make sure I get this right now. When I look around, I don't see people I identify with. I feel out of place. I feel literally like an outsider. You know, when I went to Thailand in 2012, I didn't see people that I could identify with either. I felt out of place. I felt like an outsider. That's why I went there. And I had the same racist experience when I went to Mexico and the same racist experience in Norway and in Australia too. I felt like an outsider, like I didn't belong there. Now, thanks to woke philosophy, the next time I visit Thailand, I will demand that those racist Thai bastards produce two continuous lines of straight white Americans from the jetway all the way to my hotel room because otherwise I will feel literally out of place there. Five seconds of research reveals that racist, racist America is by far at the top of the list when it comes to spending money in order to be surrounded by different people that make them feel literally like outsiders. Here's the quote, the United States travel and tourism industry directly contributed the largest amount to gross domestic product, GDP, out of any country worldwide with a total contribution of 580.7 billion US dollars in 2019. That means that America's travel and tourism contribution to world GDP is greater than that of sophisticated, cultured, and totally non-racist Germany, Italy, France, the United Kingdom, and Spain combined. The U.S. contributes more to tourism worldwide than China and Japan combined. That means that more than any other nation in the world, Americans seem to enjoy being in the company of people not like themselves, and some of those American travelers and tourists are white. So what are we to make of the lack of context in this ABC News story, among many others? Is it because the lily white progressives at ABC News are too stupid to do the two minutes of research that I did when confronted with this great national tragedy, which must be addressed immediately? Or was it because they were too evil to include that kind of context, because to do so, would destroy the narrative of hatred that they're here to manufacture. Stupid or evil? I guess it can be both, probably both. ABC News headquarters is located at their Times Square studio. Now, I'm going to take the liberty of saying that when it comes to the mental image of urban America, you cannot beat Times Square in New York City. I'm also willing to bet that the writers, producers, technical people, and on-air personalities don't, as a general rule, spend a great deal of their time in the national park system on account of the national parks being outdoors. But that doesn't mean that they don't have a clear mental picture of what goes on in a national park. These evil idiots genuinely believe that white people like me never really feel secure unless we can see the electrified barbed wire, the machine gun towers, and the skin tone checkpoints that are the hallmark of national parks all across the United States. By the time we white people finally arrive at our actual campgrounds, we become for the first time completely at ease. We pop the trunk to let our Mexican servants out in order to set up the tents and chairs and sun umbrellas while we sit around enjoying the company of other white people, just doing what white people do when secure in our white supremacist bastion national parks, you know, writing each other zero interest mortgages or comparing photos of our private jets, maybe taking a quick and refreshing champagne bath, that kind of thing. Ah, the gracest outdoors. How condescending is this idea? This idea that people of color can't handle being outside their comfort zone, let alone outside. What white hood wearing genuine racist would have the nerve to say in 2021 that it's the white man's burden to help these poor people of color spend more time outside? 
Because now, you see, now you're at the heart of left-wing progressivism. If you can no longer own people of color, you can at least maintain a comfortable feeling of superiority by making them out to be helpless children waiting for white liberals working out of glass skyscrapers in New York City to step up and reach down. It's a garbage philosophy for garbage people. Look, I know progressives. I've studied them for years, both in the laboratory and in their natural habitats. The limousine liberals at ABC News genuinely believe this lie, and they're concerned, deeply concerned. They no doubt feel it's up to them to get out to the national parks and welcome people of color in person. I can see them now. He's dressed in $400 infiltrator hiking pants by Outdoor Research, wearing $700 Fanner Matterhorn hiking boots with a ceramic stud reinforced surface, multiple riveted double seams, ball bearing eyelets, and of course, the Gore-Tex membrane, which provides up to 20 meters per second of chainsaw protection. He's also wearing a $990 Tom Ford solid silk crew neck t-shirt from Neiman Marcus underneath a $2,000 Linea Rasa light hooded jacket from Bergdorf Goodman. Oh, and, and don't forget the $300 Maui Jim big wave sunglasses underneath his authentic Peruvian chulo hat. She's wearing $175 Fjall Raven Abisco trekking tights, a pair of $1,100 Jimmy Choo suede hiking boots with authentic third world Esha shearing trim, a $630 Moose Jaw Expedition 80 hiking backpack made from 420D HD Oxford PU coated nylon with three front daisy chains and side compression straps and a dual stay length adjustable suspension system. She's wearing a $600 Tom Brown four bar long sleeve compression top, $340 Varnett Ice 1709 sports sunglasses with removable side panels for maximum protection, and both of them are slathered in $60 ISDIN Photo Broad Spectrum SPF 50 sunblock with a specially formulated ultralight emulsion design specifically for photo aging defense. Dear race baiting Marxist hate mongers and race baiting Marxist hate mongers of color, if there's no coercion, then there can be no oppression. If you are being forcibly denied access to America's hiking trails and national parks, well, that's oppression, and that's our problem. If not, then that's an infantile, neurotic demand for portable comfort zones, and that's your problem.